Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. All right, it's a special request today. Um, it's been over two weeks, so I apologize. Uh, but it's a circus themed birthday party. And so this is the file that she bought. And when I got it, I did take a look at this a couple of weeks ago and I was a little bit um, mind blown because this is a crazy SVG. It's huge, it's all attached. Um, so I definitely wanted to help because I feel like, you know, so many times, it, or at least for me in the beginning, I would buy some of these files thinking, okay, well, I spent the money, so I don't have to design it. And then I'm stuck with this craziness. So I kind of want to find the way out of this and use this SVG file to the best that we can. So I know she wanted to do off the mat. Um, so here's what I'm thinking with off the mat. Uh, maybe I would love to do the tent, but the problem with the tent is these stripes, they're long and there's nothing in between them. So if you don't want any seams, the maximum these stripes can be is the length is 11 and a half inches, unless of course you have 12 by 24 cardstock, which so few of us have that on hand, right? So I'm going to assume that this is going to be 11 and a half inches. That means this, you could probably do this at maybe 24 inches and it would be seamless. Um, I don't know if that's big enough for what you want to do. And then if you make this 24 inches, that means everything else is much smaller. Whereas if we did this flame thingy and made it really big which you can because this gray can be sliced up if you did that in black and you did black glitter card stock you will not be able to see the seams because it's already really thin and then we can make each one of these animals near this flame a little bit bigger to fit in there um so i feel like that is a good option um and then the rest we could use for the cake topper um I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you one. Hopefully you like that idea. The other thing is you can also do the clowns really big, but I feel like if this is our main thing, we'll make that really big. That will go in the background. Everything else will go in front of it. So in theory, this lion can be 24 inches and it won't look weird because it'll be in the front and then you have your um, this thing in the background really big. I'm going to try to do that. Okay. All right. So first thing is, um, this file is all attached. So we need to ungroup it. And it's a really, really big file too. So, uh, not exactly my favorite kind of thing to do. Like I prefer to bring in one image at a time. This kind of ties up design space and it makes it work really slow when it's a humongous file. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just delete the things that I don't wanna deal with at the moment. Um, and then when we do the cake topper, for instance, bring back things, but see, this is taking a really long time. Um, and it's frozen for now. So while it's thinking and doing its thing, I can talk to you why I've been so busy. So Michael's uh, recently, this month, in the month of May, launched their national Zoom classes. And they went with 14 instructors and I'm one of your instructors. I think I'm the only instructor doing Cricut. Um, so I'm doing Cricut 101, HT Iron On, Easy Press 101, I'm doing off the mat. So the only difference between what you're seeing here, which is free, I get it, um, versus the paid Zoom classes is that uh, at maximum there's 20 people, but I gotta be honest, there's lots of kinks in how you enroll in the program. So most of my classes have been really, really small, like two people, three people. So you get, you. so you pay your, I think, however much it is, I don't remember. I have, my different classes range from $15 to $45. Um, 
but you're in a class with a small group, maybe even a personal lesson. We'll see. I will always keep it. So if someone buys it, I will go even if you're the only student. So I promise you that. Um, but you can stop me and ask questions. Um, so far, there there's always been time left over. So then I get to see you do everything. And so that's when you really run into the things, right? When you look at me doing it and I'm explaining it, I feel like everything makes sense. Um, so anyway, so if you go to my Instagram or Facebook, and I will note it on this video too, so you have access to it. I forgot to note it on YouTube, but um, that will be on there. Okay, so I think the file finally came up. So let's, I brought in, oh, you know what? It's all ungrouped, so I should be able to delete. Okay, where's my file? There it is. Hopefully I can delete, let's see. Can I delete? I'm not even able to click on anything right now. This is the problem with really big files. And you can see, I don't even wanna scroll down, but look at this, there's a lot of pieces going on over here. Um, Why won't you let me do anything? Yeah. Okay, so let me just move down my circle over in case in case it's a weird ungroup. Oh look, you could still ungroup more. Shoot. Okay, so let's Oh man, it's not doing anything right now. Okay, it's moving, it's moving. All right. Not letting me click on anything. So I can imagine if you, you know, if you're doing this for the first time or trying to do a birthday theme for your kids, this, this would be frustrating and difficult to deal with. So what, I, like I said, it's a really big file. What I would want to do is delete anything that I'm not using. So, but it's not even letting me click on anything. Nothing's working. Oh, there. My ringmaster is highlighted. So I hit delete to see if that helps. Mm. Okay. So, okay, so here's my ring leader, ringmaster, ring leader. <laughs> um, let's keep a clown I'll keep the the one with the green hair and the only reason why is because I like that the pants I don't know something about it I just want that one okay so I'm deleting that clown I'm gonna delete the cotton candy stand but I do like the cotton candy so I'm gonna leave the cotton candy um come on there. So it's taking a while to delete. Um, this little logo from the designer. Okay, I don't know what these things are. We don't need these. Okay. Um, don't need those flagpoles. Don't need this little girl. Okay, I'm only gonna do one circus animal off the mat. So hopefully when I do one, you'll know how to do the rest of them. 
Um, so let's do, I'm going to separate this video. This video will just be off the mat, okay? So let me delete that. I'm going to delete this. That. I'm actually going to do every, I'm going to delete everything but the ring and the lion. Because I think these two go together. Um, all right, so let's look at this. Let's make, so now hopefully it's a lot easier. Let's make this really big and see what we have. These are really cute details. So first thing is, let's see what we have over here. We have, okay, I don't see like a general full on black background. So with this tiger, what I would do is duplicate it and then weld it. And let's just make it black so in our head we know what we're dealing with. And I'm gonna move that all the way to the back, okay? So send to the back. And so now we have a black background that everything's gonna be layered on top of, okay? Um, and maybe I'm just going to do this lion first because I think it's going to be difficult with all these colors in, okay? So here's our big lion, and he can be big because what's cool is his biggest feature is probably his face, right, the yellow part, and maybe this length of the arm. But if you think of each, um, each one of these arms being 11 and a half inches, this is 11 and a half, this is 11 and a half, this is 11 and a half, this is easily a 30 inch um, character without any seams. So let's, let's just make him 30 inches because I feel like that's a really, really good size. That's what I make most of my um, um, characters. So, okay, so we have this. Let's make it smaller so that we don't have to scroll up and down. All right, so at 30 inches, that's going to be pretty good. Um, all right, let's do this guy. So let's see what we have. First, let's click on him and look at all the different colors we have. We have way too many colors here. Um, all these different shades, I get why we have them, but we don't need you know, 10 different shades of this lion. Um, so I'm gonna start moving things. I like, man, this is hard because I can't tell what is what. Um, I think his mane, it's hard to tell from the shapes what everything is. Um, okay, so let's ungroup this. Let's look at these legs. Uh, we need to ungroup it again. So see when you start clicking things and this is still available, that means it's not ungrouped yet. All right, so here we go. We've got legs. Here are the legs. So that's there. So that's here, okay? Let's look at the face. Where are you, face? Um, wow, this is like very, very difficult. <laughs> and oh, we can still ungroup, that's why. Ungroup. Okay, so here is the face. And like if the face is only 9.8 by 8.48. So this, you know, that can be cut on the cricket. Okay, so here's the leg, and here's the face. Let's go to um, color sync. Okay, so first thing, okay, uh, this looks like the tail, right? Yeah, this is the tail. So the tail is a different color than everything else. No, it's going to be the same color as, I mean, you didn't even notice the color change, right? So that's there. So the tail, the paws, and some of these are of the same color. 
That's good. Um, let's see, do we need to ungroup that? Well, yes and no. So let's see, let's ungroup it. I think the lion should be two colors. It should be this color and whatever the ears and the cheeks are. So, and it's, this is, let's see if anything else is still, okay, so these are up here. Wow, all right, so let, oops, I didn't want to duplicate, sorry. Let's go back to color sync. Okay, so you have the white of the eyes, and what are these things? Why are they different colors? Oh, I think these are the big eyes and these are the small ones. They're all going to be of the same white. And the stars will also be of the same white. So right now we're just consolidating colors. I think we have way too many colors to deal with for cardstock. And even look at the, the stand that he's on. The, this is the red, but then the top of, of the stand is a different shade of red. So no. <laughs> It's going to be the same shade of red. And this. I don't even know where that is. That didn't change for me. Okay, so here's the green. All right, so now we have these things. Are these the... This is the leg, the face. So what is this? That's the tail. Okay, so let's make the tail the same color. So we're gonna just take everything down to just the bare minimum. Um, oh, I see. This is the, this is this brown. Should it just be red? Yeah, I'm gonna make it red. Okay. Um, okay, what is this? This is a different shade. Okay, so I'm going to make this. I'm going to make it the same color as this. And then these are his legs. Um, so the reason why this might look a little funny is because it moved from front to back. So if we go back to arrange and move it backwards, it might not look so bad. Um, and I don't want you to not like the image because it changed its position just for us visually. All right, if I move it, I don't want to move it to the back. Um, let me move the, let me see if I can move the legs to the front. Center front, yeah. So you see how the legs are? It's a little bit better that way, right? Um, okay, so we have these two legs, which I don't mind keeping it that orange, but I'm gonna change it to a different orange. Okay, what is this? Okay, this, I'm gonna make this color. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we're down to two shades of orange yellow yeah, for the lion and then this is for his mane which i like having two different colors i think it's cute so you have two browns and two oranges um all right i think i'm okay with that all right so four five what is this blue let's go to layers and see what's blue there's something that's blue. I think it's this. Oh, it's a little dot. Just delete that. Okay. So let's look at our colors again. So we have, ignore the gray. The gray is what I brought in so that we can slice and weld if we need to. So here's the black of our eyes. And I'm wondering if we even need that. Hold on. Oh, we do need it. Okay, so those are our eyes, that's fine. 
We're going to make our black background the same color. So if we white, we have black, two shades of brown for the main, two shades of orange yellow for the body, and then we have our red and green. This is more doable. Okay. So um, I don't know if I like that little piece there. Uh, it's fine. You can decide later if you want to keep it in or not, but that's what your that's what our lion looks like. Lion, tiger, lion. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think all these pieces are not a part. Okay, so let's go to ungroup that and let's see what we have here. We have this, which we need to slice up because it's 17 and a half by 10. No problem. So we have this piece, this piece we need to slice up. Um, hmm. So I would recommend, sorry, I'm thinking, this green we're going to have to basically slice in half right here. So there's going to be a seam coming down. But it won't be a seam if you use glitter cardstock. You won't be able to see that seam at all. So I would definitely recommend that. Okay, so we have this, this. So let's take our square and let's just start working on these pieces to make sure that our Cricut can cut it, right? So let's first thing is this. I would slice these pieces off right here where you won't even be able to see the seams, right? So let's do this first one like right there okay grab these two items when we're slicing you can only slice two things at a time so we're slicing the red and the square so let's slice that and see now this piece is 2.7 by 9.3 totally cuttable on our Cricut and we're barely going to even see those seams right because it's right here so let's and let's do that with this piece we're going to go right down there. And I'm in a lot of traffic right now, right? Oh, no, you know what? I can't use this one. Hold on. Let me bring in some more squares so that we can um, what, uh, slice. Okay, sorry. Um, our slice results, we can just remove. Okay, so we need this really big. And let's slice this, I'll just slice this one. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the red and my square. And you see, I didn't have to move everything. As long as your cursor only picks up two items, then you can slice, even when it's like in crazy traffic right there. Okay, now this piece by itself, it can, it can be cut. It's 11.4 by nine. So I'm gonna leave it together like this. So our red for now, our little triangles are all done. Let's see how big is this. Okay, this is 14.3 basically by two and a half. However, um, right now the way it is, it shows that we can't cut it on the Cricut, right? Not with our 12 by 12 cardstock. But because our length is so short, I'm going to twist this around and see, do you see how that changed? Now it's saying this image is 10.4 by 10. So we can cut it on the Cricut. So I'm gonna do that. Let's look at this little piece here. This little piece is too long. Let's just slice it in half. And again, if you use red glitter cardstock, and I do recommend using the Cricut brand, so grab those two items and slice in half, you won't be able to see these seams, okay? So let's get rid of our slice results. So all our red is over there. Here's our green. Um, green and red. Are these the same? Why would that happen? Um, I don't think we need both. But I just can't remember from the image if we need the red or the green. I think we need the red. I don't think we need the green. Okay, because we have the big green bucket here. Let's see if these stars can be ungrouped. Yep, the stars can be ungrouped, so we're good there. So now each individual star is by itself. So that's all good. 
Um, so let's slice this one because it's too long, right? It's 17.6. So let's just bring it in right here. So right now the red stripe is highlighted. I'm going to hit the shift key and I'm just going to grab my square and I'm going to slice. And you see that's like in a lot of traffic right here. It's totally fine. So I'm going to delete the slice results. We don't need that. And here's our cut up pieces. So that's all good. All right, so this guy we need to cut in half basically. So I'm just gonna move this like that and I'm gonna slice these two things. So here's our bucket that he's standing on. Okay, so that's all good. And I wanna say all these pieces are already fine the way they are. So that needs to be ungrouped. <laughs> Okay, that should be ungrouped. But all these pieces, I think measurement wise, will be less than um, 11 and a half inches. Now with this one, how it's, um, just make sure you ungroup it so that later when we go to cut it, you can move it closer. Yeah, I think these are all good. All right, so actually not that bad. Let's ungroup that tail. That means we only have the big black background to slice up, okay, for you to layer everything on top. So I think it'll be easier for me to move this. Let's move this guy, everything over. All right, so here's our big black background. It's 17.7 .7 by 30 inches, okay? So let's get rid of our circle. Let's make this 11 inches by 11. Technically, you can cut up to 11 and a half inches, but I don't like dealing with half inches. What we're doing right now is we're building our squares to be completely flushed so that when we slice this, we have six pieces that can be cut on the Cricut and that will end up putting back together like a puzzle. Because right now, as a whole, um, you can't cut it, right? So. Um, now that we have the 11 by 11, what I want you to do is just put the first square somewhere over the image. We're just building our six pieces right now. So then you're going to go to the position feature over here, and we're going to designate whole numbers for this. So this is going to be your X coordinate and your Y coordinate. Um, so 11 and a half, you're going to round up to 12. 2.1, you're going to round to the nearest whole number. We're going to round to 2. So what we're saying is on the x-axis, go over 12 units, go down two units, and this is the beginning of our square. Duplicate that square, put it close enough to your other square, and that way you don't have to do any math. You just round to the nearest whole number again. So 23.1 becomes 23, 2.16 becomes two. So now we have two perfectly flush squares. And the reason why you want that is you don't want, you don't want any gaps, because then when you slice it, it's not going to match up. You also don't want any overlays. You don't want, you want to be able to just push these pieces up and tape them together. You don't want it to overlap and then you're trying to figure out where your pieces go. So now that we have two pieces that are um, totally flushed, grab both of them and duplicate. So we don't need to get these two squares flushed with, um, with each other. Now we just need to get it flushed with the ones up on top. Again, if you move it close enough, you can just round to the nearest whole number. 12 is already good. 13.16 becomes 13. And then now we're gonna duplicate again, and we're gonna grab our last set of squares. And 11.9 becomes 12, 24.16 becomes 24. All right, we can also do the math behind this, okay? So this square is at 12, right? 12 plus 11 is 23. Um, that's where 23 is. So that's all that we're doing. And that's the reason why I don't do half inches because I don't want to add half inches in my head. Um, all right. So over here in our panel, panel, go find our black background, our little, let's see, is it all the way at the bottom? It is. So select that. That's active now. Go to arrange, send to the front. We just want to make sure that where we're slicing makes sense. And what I mean by that is this one looks 
good as is. But what I wouldn't want is, for instance, if you had something like this, because when you go to slice this, a little piece of his tail is going to be hanging out and you're going to have to tape that piece to the bigger piece. I really want six big pieces here. Um, and so I would want something like this where, you know, this square right here is one big piece. Everything are, um, is big right here. All right, so once you decide that you're good with it, you're gonna grab the square and the image one, two at a time, right? Two pieces, two images at one time and slice. And we're gonna slice all the way around. So I'm gonna grab the middle section. And that little, that little thing right there, how it disappeared, it's okay, we don't need that piece. It's just a glitch in the system and it does it every time I do off the mat. So not a big deal. Grab this piece over here, slice. If slicing is grayed out, then you grabbed more than two items and I'll show you what I mean. So if you watch my cursor, I'm right here really close to the other square, right? So I'm gonna just a little bit grab that and that's gonna be grayed out because I grabbed more than two items. But here I'm grabbing two items, just the square and the black image. All right, so I think we have everything sliced up. The other tip is when I move these things, I keep them in order so that when I take it off the mat, I know exactly where the pieces go and I don't have to worry about trying to piece this together. Is it right side up? Is it not? I'm really bad at that. So I always have this for um, just so that I can save some time. All right, the grayed out pieces, we don't need those. So you can just grab them and delete them, which I am trying to do. <laughs> All right, I'm moving this piece over as well as this piece. And then the rest here, I can grab all this and delete as soon as it deletes. <laughs> all right, there we go. Um, okay, so I think we have this. Let's go to make it so you can see uh, project incompatible. Why? Oh, I still have this gigantic piece that I was using to slice. I think that's it. Let's go to make it. Okay. So let me move myself over. This is the white and look, it's nice and small, right? Here are our black pieces. So you have some eyes, the mouth. I think it, that's what it was. You don't think we can consolidate any pieces there. So this is the main, right? So this is kind of cool. They're big pieces. So it's going to look really cool. I would love for you to use glitter cardstock. Use one glitter cardstock for this color and maybe not for this color. And then you'll have that nice contrast. Um, actually, I would probably use it for this one because that means the tail and the toes will ha have the glittery color. And then I would use regular cardstock for this one. Or maybe even like... Um, the special like metallic paper or something the contrast in the types of cardstock will really make this look nice all right here's his body and i think these can this can be consolidated to the other one so click on this one go to the three dots select that and we're going to move the object and we're going to move it to this paper and i'm pretty sure yep so you can move it like this. So instead of taking up two sheets of cardstock, we were able to fit it onto one, okay? Here's our yellow. Um, I mean, I, this is these are big pieces. I don't think we can consolidate that. Here's our big green stand. We knew those were gonna be big pieces. Here's the red that we didn't slice, if you remember. So I don't love that it's like that. What you can do though, is we can definitely move this one over. So let's click on this. Three dots, move object. Let's move it with this piece. And you can twist it. Oh. Shoot, sorry, I got rid of my face. Hopefully that's okay. We're almost at the end of the video, so I didn't mean to delete myself. All right, so that's good, right? So we got rid of one sheet of cardstock. Um, I feel like we could probably, we could probably move this one to this or even for sure this one okay 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because the next time that you go, especially if you use red glitter cardstock, I like moving that because now this piece of scrap is more usable. It's two and a half inches by 12 inches. You can use this next time if you need hearts, lips, whatever. So I'm always trying to save cardstock and I felt like that was a good, um, a good save. Um, all right, and that's it. So this little guy should look really good at 30 inches. Please let me know if you have any questions. I owe you one more tutorial at least to do the cake topper. But um, all right, if you have any questions or someone else that has a special request, please comment on YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook. <laughs> comment or send me a message, whatever it is. I would love to help you with your project. And that's it. All right, guys. Thank you.